All right, listen. Uh, Sonic Frontiers. I'm not too, like, into the mix, but I've, I'm, I'm just enough into the mix to know that uh, there's a lot of people that think it's going to be really bad and, uh, or whatever. And I just want, I just want you guys to realize something. No. Sonic Frontiers is going to be good. It's going to be great, actually. Uh, I just wanted to go on the record to let you know I have not played a Sonic game since Sonic Colors on Wii, which I didn't really care for. The ones I liked, I had uh, Genesis when I was little. I had Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Sonic and & Knuckles. Uh, I liked those games, you know, but I, was, I sucked at them because I was, I was a little boy. And then on GameCube or Dreamcast, they had Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, but that's when those are the last two games they made before Dreamcast um, or Sega stopped making uh, consoles. So Sonic really had nowhere to go after Sonic Adventure 2, and that's why everything after Sonic Adventure 2 sucks, and that's why Sonic Adventure and Adventure 2 is really good, because it's like, imagine like Mario, right? You have Mario, he had 2D games, right? And there's spinoffs and whatever, but he had 2D games, okay? And then on 64, they came out with a Mario Adventure type game, which was Mario 64, and then it created two different types of like mainline Mario games, like 2D and then... Uh, the 3D adventure ones, like Odyssey, Galaxy, stuff like that, Sunshine. Uh, Sonic did, was doing the same general idea. They had the original 2D ones, and then they went for uh, the 3D adventure type, and they call it Sonic Adventure and then Sonic Adventure 2. And they were both amazing, because it was a, the equivalent of saying this is the 3D version of Sonic the Hedgehog, and it was. But then they just started, when they didn't have a console to release on, they started to deviate away from adventure to go into different things. And they would they would go into like uh, like Sonic Heroes was like half adventure and then half like just random new nonsense, and then they just kept getting more nonsensical and then they tried to like start hybriding it like the the 3D and the 2D style, but they were never making an official like 3D type game because they didn't have anywhere for Sonic to go. Like they didn't know where to put Sonic. Like at the time, console exclusives were a much big bigger deal, and we were coming still coming out. Like we we're still like close enough to like the 16-bit uh or whatever era of uh sonic not sonic uh sega versus nintendo where sega's cooler than nintendo and so there was like a competition there so so the reason adventure did well on gamecube is because um especially adventure 2 did well on gamecube is because there was still that climate of um the console wars of the previous generations but we've moved past that now and when 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 coming from that you know, they ended up going towards, like, uh, I mean, they did Sonic Heroes on there, and then saw Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, I think Shadow the Hedgehog was a mistake. He should have died. Um, but let's go into um, what happened after that. It was when they did uh, Sonic the Hedgehog for Xbox 360 or whatever. I believe it's an exclusive. At this time, Microsoft was uh, buying up a lot of the developers. That's why you had, like, Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey from uh, Mistwalker and stuff like that. Um exclusive to that console which nobody in japan bought that console nobody wanted it and everybody in america like anime was still like a, a niche niche thing and uh, so uh, nobody was generally like into that like they weren't getting an xbox for that everybody in america was buying the xbox or you know maybe europe and stuff We're buying the xbox for uh, shooter games and things that were really western like they like western games western rpgs even like you know skyrim stuff like that that's what they were focused on but sonic was kind of languishing and it didn't know where to go it needed to go to nintendo the whole time right but the problem was is that nintendo because like the because people who were there for that uh console war would have respected the fact that and knew who sonic was automatically like people that were new and were getting into um yeah, Xbox and stuff. I mean, this was kind of like a different audience. So this wasn't the target audience. This wasn't the audience they needed. They needed Nintendo, but Nintendo was uh, trying to be different, trying to do their Blue Ocean strategy. They were trying to go for the, the Wii Waggles, the Wii Waggle, and that's where like colors and stuff came out on that. Um, I think some other ones came out on the Wii as well. Um, but the problem was is that the Wii had lost so many people because it was so casualized for your grandma that uh, Sonic couldn't really find, in my opinion, a great place to get a foothold with Nintendo. Because when it started to get that foothold when it was porting over uh, Dreamcast games. But a lot of people left Nintendo. And then Nintendo just now has recently built themselves back up with the Switch because the Wii U was, you know, nobody really cared for the Wii U because the Wii burned them. And, they, and they, they, it wasn't, it just sucked. 
Okay, um, so now that they're getting, gaining their foothold, it's like, yeah, Sonic would be great on Switch, but here's the problem, is the climate's completely changed. Like, modern day, nothing is really exclusive anymore, except for Nintendo games, because they're still of the, of the past. Everything else is a timed exclusive, or uh, is automatically a multi-plat, right? But see, then here's what's the thing is, is like, after the Sonic movies, they made a lot of revenue off these movies, and Sonic became kind of, like, kind of pulled back in, you know, uh, people who remember their childhood of playing Sonic, but also they have a whole new set of, of people, like younger people that are seeing Sonic for the first time at the movie, and they think that's cool, they want to play the Sonic game. Okay, so now Sonic has a bit of a zeitgeist impact. So now when they go and make this new Sonic game, they have a bigger budget, and they have probably more time, and they probably have more effort put it into the game. And so when people look at it and they say, oh, I don't like it, it looks like a tech demo or whatever they were saying before, I don't know if they still feel this way. But the thing is, is like, no. Because when I saw this game, I immediately thought, this is the best looking Sonic game. And I'm not talking about visuals. I'm talking about this looks like they actually tried to make this game. And with each more information we see about the game, I think that uh, my thought press on, process on that is being validated. And I think when this game comes out, this will be one of the people's favorite Sonic games. New people will love it. My hand's a little shaky right now, I'm sorry. Um, new people will love it and old fans will love it. And I just think that's just the case with this. And uh, if you can be a hater or you know you can be down in the dirt or whatever all you want, but as somebody who hasn't played a Sonic game in uh, over a decade, I can tell you when I look at this, I think, hey, this is gonna be good.